Hey there, Colleen here, DIYer behind LemonThistle.com, and today I am so excited to go through the planning of a renovation with you all. So I shared a couple weeks ago that we have purchased a new property, well, an old property, a 1940s house in Calgary, Alberta, that we are going to be turning into an Airbnb. And while I love a renovation, I have planned our own renovation uh, here at this house and at our last house. This was a different style for me. It was definitely a bit of a challenge and I wanted to do something different and stretch myself. And as I have shared room reveals here in the past and across social media and on my blog, I get lots of questions about the planning and the picking things. So I wanted to take you through that process with me, both deciding on the finishes. It wasn't a major renovation, it was really cosmetic. How I designed the spaces, keeping to the character and the age of the house, how I picked finishes and came up with inspiration, how I did the shopping, staying in budget, I thought we'd kind of go through it all today. And we're gonna create some design boards for the spaces here together. And I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions at all, make sure to pop those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Before we get into it, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, you can do that below so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. And if you haven't seen the full home tour here on YouTube that I shared a couple weeks ago, I will link that as well right here in the cards for you to check out and see what we are working with. All right, so we are planning the makeover for this house here. Now this house is one that we got specifically to be an Airbnb. So we are, it's a rental, we need it to be affordable, but also I, I want it to look great. The first thing that I did when I'm working with any home is I like to honor the age of the home, honor the character and design of the home itself. So I did some research on 1940s homes. And this is considered a war era, post war era home. So it's very simple, just super basic, cute for sure, but um, really cost effective and practical was kind of the style back then. So there's still definitely traditional and classical elements, but nothing too fancy. So we were gonna kind of stick with that. So after I did that and I kind of tried to learn some of the different, you know, finishes and feelings when I searched on Pinterest, 1940s home, 1940s traditional home, 1940s classic, 1940s brick home, whatever. Search, get some ideas of what is the style of the house that you're working with. Because a lot of the times, and in our case, especially a lot of that character and that style has been stripped away from the house through renovations over the years. So once I understood the style of the house and saw some examples, I was really drawn to the color palettes of the 1940s homes. I really liked how they incorporated some color, but also kept it pretty classic and neutral and I liked all the wood furniture. So I wanted to play off that a little bit. There was quite a bit of square tile, uh, nothing too fancy. So the next thing that I do is I look at the house itself and I'm like, what are the things in here that I really do love, that I wanna keep, that I want to highlight, that I don't wanna get rid of? And so in this house, it was the hardwood floors, it was the wood doors, the trim, those beautiful door hardwares, and the arches into the living room, the ceiling detail in the living room, and that beautiful clawfoot tub. I wanted to accentuate that. Beyond that, there wasn't much that I was super eager to keep because like most houses from the 1940s, it had seen some renovations and a lot of the character that I'm sure I would have loved about it had been stripped out. So you can see that in the bathroom and in the kitchen here. So I knew one of the challenges that I was going to face that I wanted to kind of tackle in the space was to bring some of that history and charm back into the kitchen, especially because it was just very not charming. Then I also looked at my limitations. So I knew that we weren't changing the wood floor and the wood floor butts right up against the kitchen flooring. And I thought, okay, so my challenge is to find a flooring that looks good right up against this wood flooring. Because you'll see both floorings from the kitchen, the bathroom, the entryway, the living room, the hallway. We need it to work together. So that was one of my challenges. One of the other challenges is that the kitchen was still in pretty good condition, even though it wasn't a look that I loved. The cabinets were definitely functional. They were not falling apart. They were starting to yellow. So while the look of them wasn't ideal, they're still very functional. So I couldn't 
justify upgrading those within our budget. So I'm using the same footprint of the kitchen, using the same kitchen cabinets. Of course, I can customize those though. So with all of this in mind, I hit Pinterest to start looking for inspiration. What I like to do is I like to make a Pinterest board for each renovation. So I make it private and then I divide that board up into specific rooms. So you can make sections on your Pinterest boards. So what I've done here is I've called it Airbnb and I have a living room, I have kitchen, bathroom, and I just start pinning. And I pin anything that I like the feel of that I think might work in this space and it doesn't need to be exactly right. So as I am browsing Pinterest and searching, I am adding to the rooms and I'm just adding anything that I am attracted to that I think might work. It could be only a little element of it. And for the bathroom, I'm searching. Uh, clawfoot tub, bathroom makeover, traditional classic bathroom makeover. And I'm seeing what sort of things are popping up here. Now, I really kept to the kitchen and the bathroom at first because those were the two areas that I could see needed the most work. The other rooms really were just paint, and so they would kind of play off what I was doing in the other spaces. Uh, we agreed that we weren't gonna touch the outside of the house really beyond kind of touching up the trim because our budget wouldn't allow for it and it didn't really need it. It's maybe not like a showstopper, but it's just totally fine. So started searching, definitely search your search terms. The other thing that you can do is when you find a pin that you like, you can scroll down to see more like it. And as I am saving these pins to my Pinterest board, I am adding notes. So after we have gone and we have pinned all of these things, it is time to start seeing what we like. So up until this point, we've been kind of free with the pins, just pin all the things that we like that might work for this space, that might work for this house, just to kind of get an idea. So as I'm scrolling through my board, I see that I, I maybe didn't know where I started, but I ended up pinning lots of green and blue kitchen cabinets. I also noticed that I was really attracted to tile floors, and I was looking at that specifically because the wooden floor, we didn't want to have wood against wood and them not match. So yes, so for the kitchen, I'm looking at it, I'm seeing, hey, there are some trends here. I like colored cabinets, I like checkerboard floors, and I am really drawn to brass finishes in these traditional spaces. So I started looking at brass finishes. One of the other things that bothered me in this kitchen is this beam running through it. It makes all the kitchen cabinets shift down lower, which really dates it in my opinion. It doesn't look intentional. So I suggested, and I'm pitching all these ideas, keep in mind, to not just myself and my husband, but we're doing this renovation with my dad and his wife. So I pitched removing most of the kitchen uppers, centering the stove on the back wall so that it's not exposed to the hallway, which is kind of a hazard to have something hot right there. Anyways, you should have cabinets on both sides of a stove. And then adding open shelving to the left of the sink. This allows the beam to be a feature, but also not draw so much attention and make everything feel short. Now, I love open shelving. I think open shelving is maybe a little bit modern for this space, but I see that there's some open shelving with the brass picture rails on here, and I think that that's really beautiful. I wonder if that's something that I could incorporate into the space. And uh, so I've got these ideas flowing. In the same vein, if I go over to my bathroom board, I'm scrolling. I love the clawfoot tub. Don't want to touch the clawfoot tub. Maybe paint the bottom of the clawfoot tub black. I like that. I really like the contrast of the black and white tile. I think that that would look really nice, but we need to warm it up with something. Oh, these old dressers that you can turn into a wood vanity. That would be really beautiful. I don't know if that's within our budget, if we can find something. So I am adding notes uh, to my Facebook marketplace to notify me when there's a vintage dresser that comes available. So once I looked at these here, I knew what I wanted. I knew, okay, I'm into the brass finishes for sure for this home. I am really interested in black and white kind of classic simple tiles used in creative ways. I like adding some color to all the black and white and warming it up with wood. So knowing that this is the direction that I'm heading, I look into the other rooms and I am really drawn to these metal bed frames, such a fan of those. I used one in the farmhouse bedroom makeover that I did a couple years ago, and I like how versatile they are. And I like that you can do a color on the wall and it's just very classic. We did this in my sister's bedroom last year too, and actually her house is very similar to this one. So as I was searching for inspiration, I was sending a lot of these pins to her because we'd already talked about some of these styles and some of these things for her own home. So it's kind of fun 
Okay, so once I've gone through my Pinterest boards and I have a pretty good idea of what I'm interested in, then I can start looking at the room specifically and coming up with some plans. So since this was a full house, what I like to do is I like to start with the biggest pieces, the things that will inform all of my other decisions. So in this house, since we had to redo the kitchen and bathroom flooring, those are the things that once we redo them, they're staying, they're not getting changed again. So I started looking at flooring. Now you can look online at flooring as much as you want, but I find that it is really helpful to go into an actual flooring store and start looking at samples and asking questions. If you can find a flooring store that is helpful, that's gonna help your search a ton. So I really love a flooring store in town called Complete Floors. So I went in there and I showed them my inspiration. I explained that we are really on a budget for this project because it's a rental. We're going to be installing it ourselves. Uh, what do they think we could do? So the first thing that I showed them was the bathroom. I said, I'm most excited about this space. I'd really like to do classic black and white tile. Best case scenario is penny tile. Love it. I understand that that's a little bit more expensive, um, but then we'd also like to balance that with maybe a more affordable tile on the walls. So we got looking at samples and they came back suggesting the small hexagons instead of the penny tiles as they're a little bit more affordable and using a glossy finish is a bit more affordable than a matte finish. But I think that I'm gonna order the black and the white tile and come up with a mix. As we were talking about it more, we talked about doing a white subway tile on the wall, and I'm not a fan of subway tile. I think it's maybe a little bit overdone. It's beautiful, don't get me wrong, and I don't know that anybody hates it. I just would prefer to do something different. I love the look of square tiles in a brickly pattern, so kind of like almost a more classic subway tile. So that's what we went ahead and ordered. We found one that was pretty affordable. And since we were doing white tile on the wall, I thought it would be fun to switch it up and maybe do black on the floors, which I didn't see as much on Pinterest. I had to search really specifically to find examples of what I was thinking in my head on Pinterest to be able to communicate my ideas with both my husband and my dad and his wife. So, once we decided on the tiles, then I knew kind of how I could run in the bathroom. The other flooring that we were looking for was for the kitchen. Now again, we have the wood flooring in the rest of the house that this butts right up against, so I didn't want a wood look, but I know that I've already spent money on tile in the bathroom and my budget doesn't allow to do a fancy tile in the kitchen. So I started kind of asking questions. I said, honestly, my dream would be to do a checkerboard floor, but I think that that's out of my budget. And I went in thinking, I need to find cheap black and white tiles. This is the only way I can do it. Or maybe there's vinyl tiles. And they said, you know, there's no vinyl tiles like this, especially not within your budget. Um, real tiles would probably be out of your budget too. But what we can look at is VCT tiles. Now I've never heard of VCT tiles, but the best way I can describe it to you is the flooring at Safeway. You know, that kind of like marbled rubberish flooring tiles, those are VCT tiles. Now, VCT has come a long way since those, but they are incredibly durable. So we ended up ordering a black and white VCT tile. The cost was super affordable. It's glued down so we didn't have to wait and do separate days of mortar and grout. And I am so happy with them when I see them in person. I'm like, these look really nice. These don't look super cheap. And that is exactly what I wanted. So going and talking to somebody who's an expert at what they do, 10 out of 10, recommend. So now that I know what type of flooring and permanent fixtures I have in this space, I can start planning around that. So in the kitchen, I know that we're doing the checkerboard floor. I know that we've got a lot of doors and windows in there. I do wanna bring a color in, but I feel like putting a color on the walls will kind of look choppy between all the cabinets and the doors and windows. So I thought about doing a color on the cabinets since they were yellowing anyways. Looking at the design of the kitchen, I didn't love it, honestly. I find the beam that runs through the middle of the kitchen really awkward. It pushes the entire cabinet set down and I didn't like that the oven is on the end of the cabinet run. I was told pretty quickly that we couldn't afford to redo the kitchen, so I started brainstorming with what we had, what we could do. But what I like to use for this, especially to visualize things, is IKEA Kitchen Planner. Even if I'm not planning on getting new kitchen cabinets, I find that it has the flexibility to work with most kitchen sizes and types of cabinets cabinets to help you visualize your space. So I went ahead and I dropped all of our measurements into there and I started playing. And so what I've come up with that I think we're going to do 
is to remove the cabinets above the sink and to the left, all the way to the wall and all the way across the range wall. So we're gonna get rid of all those cabinets so that the beam no longer looks like it's interfering with the cabinets. We'll put a sconce on that wall. Right now there's switches for under cabinet lighting, so we'll just use that for a sconce instead of under cabinet lighting, and then put in some open shelving. I also wanted to move the stove in so it's not right on the end of the cabinet run. So moving that bank of drawers that is to the right of the cabinets and moving it to the other side of the stove, although it will be a small section of countertop that's not that useful, it makes it safer and it allows for the range hood to then be centered on that wall and to look design-wise a whole lot nicer. So the next task was picking finishes for the space. So I knew that I wanted to paint the cabinets a color. I was leaning towards blue since we'd already done green in our kitchen. So when picking a paint color, and I've written blog posts on this before, but I think it's so important to remember that anything you put on the wall is gonna appear way more saturated when it's in a big space. So I always like to take the color that I like and then tone it down, look for grayer undertones. And so the blue that I chose definitely has more gray undertones, but I think that once it's on the cabinets, it's still gonna look really bright, really beautiful. And those gray undertones also give a little bit of a classic feel compared to some of the brighter colors. I wanna keep the countertop pretty neutral. I feel like there's already a lot going on in that space between the checkerboard floors, the blue cabinets and brass hardware and the open shelf. I just thought, Let's keep it simple. Let's either go with black or white to match the floors. Ikea has a really beautiful black laminate counter. They just come in slabs and with our kitchen size, we are able to get two slabs and then that will redo the kitchen countertop in there. Obviously we didn't want to keep the red. It's not the greatest. And uh, so we've ordered the black flecked countertop from them that we will put in that space. I thought keep it simple, order a little bit more of the bathroom tile to add some backsplash behind the countertops and call it a day. So I think that that will be a really beautiful kitchen design. We need to do the table in the kitchen. That's the only eating area. So I'm looking for a round kitchen table and my preference would be to add wood into the space to draw some of the wood colors that are in the rest of the house with the wood doors and trim into this room where that's all been stripped. All that character has been stripped out. I think I'd love to do black chairs around the wood table and I am having a really hard time finding used chairs that I like the look of whereas I think there's lots of wooden tables available on Facebook marketplace I can probably find a good one um, I think that I'm gonna be ordering the wooden chairs or the black chairs for around the dining table in there new to save some money, I'm just looking on Amazon for affordable light fixtures. I'm looking for one that can swag with a chain and I would like for it to be a brass finish. I have a whole video about how to make design boards using Canva, so I will link that below. All right, so for the bathroom, we have decided on our tile. We're gonna do the black on the floor, the white on the walls to hopefully add a little bit more contrast and a little bit more interest to the space. I'd really like to bring in some brass finishes. I'd love to have a wood vanity in there. I think that we're gonna end up reusing an old dresser to turn it into a vanity to save some dollars. And then I'd love to pull some color in there. So again, I'm sticking to really toned down muted colors. I love the look of a green. So I picked a almost brownish light green here. And I think that's gonna look so beautiful in the space. All right, so now that I have the two main spaces that we are going to be refinishing, let's look at the other rooms in the house. So we have two bedrooms and we have a living room and then we have the whole basement suite. So the kitchen is connected to the hallway. So I thought we could paint all of that white, keep it really neutral into the living room. I love how the ceiling detail pops against the ceiling. So I would like to paint the walls not white. So I'm thinking maybe kind of like a taupish color, something warm and cozy, but still light and bright and kind of neutral. And then we could bring some texture in with curtains. And before I planned anything, I found this beautiful article couch for a smoke and deal. So we're gonna be putting this gray couch in the space. So here is what I'm coming up with. I think bring some of those blues into the space. I have this blue wingback chair that we've had since, it's since Shane and I got married. I think I bought it for like 50 bucks off Facebook or Kijiji back then. I, we didn't even have Facebook Marketplace back then. Um, and it's traveled from house to house with us and it just doesn't have a good place in our own home. Whereas I think that it will suit this space really beautifully and it will pull some of the blue from the kitchen cabinets into the living room. All right, looking into the bedrooms, I wanna do something kind of fun. 
I'm really drawn to the metal bed frames. I think that we should be able to find some either on Facebook Marketplace or uh, if we start looking for sales. And then I want to do a bold color in here. You know that I love dark bedrooms. My current bedroom is black. My last bedroom was navy when we painted my sister's bedroom last year. It was a dark green. I'm a big fan. I love dark bedrooms with white curtains and white bedding, and I would like to do that here. So I have chosen a green and a taupe because I think that they really work with the palettes in the rest of the house and they would be a fun starting point for a little cozy retreat Airbnb bedroom. If I can swing it, I'd love to do a molding wall on the bigger bedroom, which will have a king bed in it. And I think the molding wall will add some character into that space and really make the dark color feel cozy and super intentional. So these are the design boards that I have for upstairs. I am ordering quite a bit on Amazon, largely because this renovation is eight hours away from us. I can ship things to the house. I know that they'll get there quickly and I don't have to spend my days running around town while we are in another city and supposed to be renovating. I am also trying to save money by buying a lot of the furniture on Facebook Marketplace. So I know that I'm already gonna be doing a ton of running around. The more that I can have at the house ready and waiting for us to just install, the better. And so you can see all the design boards here and how they kind of work together and it makes it really easy to know what I want to order and how it's going to look and where to install it when we're there. I'll kind of, I'll have these available for anybody that's helping us and we'll just run with these designs. And you can see how it goes from like searching for the things on Pinterest to deciding what you like to figuring out the key pieces like the flooring to then moving to, okay, well then how can we work with that flooring and everything else that we want to accomplish into a design that you're excited about that you can run with. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this little walkthrough of planning a renovation in my mind, designing a space. If you have any questions at all, you can definitely pop those in the uh, comments below or you can contact me on social. The next video that you're gonna see about this house is going to be the basement suite. I am so excited to share how that is coming together with you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. We'll see you next time.